enzymes are generally regulated by two main mechanisms regulation of enzyme catalytic activity which is short term regulation process and regulation of enzyme quantity which is long term regulation process enzyme catalytic activity is regulated by allostatic regulation activation of latent enzymes that means the irreversible covalent modification and reversible covalent modification compartmentation isozymes multi enzyme complex formation and by environmental factors already i have discussed about the allostatic regulation activation of latent enzymes and compartmentation today in this video i am going to discuss about the regulation of enzyme quantity enzyme quantity is regulated by two mechanisms enzyme synthesis at gene level and enzyme degradation enzyme synthesis at gene level is controlled by either induction or repression hello everyone welcome to my channel dr tapati's presentation myself dr tapati vansate today topic of the presentation is regulation of enzyme quantity i am going to discuss about control of enzyme synthesis at gene level that means induction and repression and i am going to discuss about enzyme degradation the amount of the enzyme directly controls the velocity of the reaction catalyzed by that enzyme there are two types of enzymes constitutive enzymes or housekeeping enzyme the levels of which are not controlled and remain fairly constant and second type is adaptive enzymes their concentrations increase or decrease as per body needs and are well regulated most of the enzymes particularly the rate limiting ones are present in very low concentration and have short half lives this helps in the efficient regulation of the enzyme levels let's know about the regulation of enzyme quantity by controlling enzyme synthesis and by enzyme degradation the synthesis of enzymes which are proteins is regulated by the genes therefore enzyme synthesis is controlled by induction and repression induction or repression ultimately determines the enzyme concentration at the gene level induction represents increased synthesis of enzyme in response to an inducer inducer may be substrate or hormone the presence of a substrate can induce enzyme synthesis by resulting in a substantial increase in enzyme concentration as for example glucokinase is stimulated by glucose which is the substrate of this enzyme in glycolysis pathway hormones are also known to increase enzyme synthesis the hormone insulin induces the synthesis of glycogen synthetase glucokinase phosphofructokinase and pyruvate kinase all these enzymes are involved in the utilization of glucose during the well fed condition the hormone cortisol induces the synthesis of many enzymes as for example pyruvate carboxylase tryptophan oxygenase and tyrosine amino transferase as i told you the levels of constitutive enzymes or housekeeping enzymes are not controlled and remain fairly constant therefore those are non inducible enzymes repression represents decreased synthesis of enzyme by repression repression of an enzyme denotes inhibition of its synthesis not of its activity let's know few examples of repression in many instances substrate can repress the synthesis of enzyme like pyruvate carboxylase is a key enzyme in the synthesis of glucose from non carbohydrate sources like pyruvate and amino acids in gluconeogenesis pathway if there is sufficient glucose uh, glucose available that means uh, during the well fed condition there is no necessity for its synthesis this is achieved through repression of pyruvate carboxylase by glucose hormone can act as the repressor glucokinase involved in the glycolysis process is re repressed by glucagon during starvation condition product of the enzyme can act as repressor also 
ALA synthetase involved in the heme synthesis process is replaced by heme, which is the product of this synthesis pathway. A series of structural genes determines the molecular composition of the enzymes. From the genes, molecules of messenger RNA carry the transcribed list of instructions into the cytoplasm where the ribosomes of the surface reticulum with the assistance of tRNA assemble the individual amino acids into the required enzyme molecule. Two scientists, Jacob and Monod, were the first to suggest that the genetic regulatory mechanism, which they postulated as applicable to bacteria, might apply generally to cells in higher animals. Briefly, they suggested that the rate of enzyme synthesis is under the control of regulator and operator genes with a repressure molecule in the cell cytoplasm acting as a link between the two. There are two basic systems of control, the inducible system and the repressible system. In the inducible system, the repressure molecule is synthesized under the coded instruction of a regulatory gene and in its active form it evades the formation of specific proteins to allow the formation of those proteins when they are required the repressure is inactivated by combination with an inducer as a result an operator gene is allowed to switch on setting in motion the transcription of a series of genes which code for single enzymes or groups of related enzymes involved in a single metabolic pathway when all available inducing substrate is converted, repressure molecules are free to attach to the operator gene once more and inhibit enzyme synthesis. The active state of the repressure molecule may be visualized as negative control of enzyme synthesis or inhibition of enzyme induction. Through an example, we can easily understand induction and repression of enzyme synthesis. Insulin and glucagon control acetylcholine carboxylase enzyme synthesis in fatty acid biosynthesis pathway where acetylcholine is converted to malonylcholine by the action of acetylcholine carboxylase during the well fed condition insulin level is high it induces gene expression of acetylcholine carboxylase whereas during fasting condition glucagon level is high it represses gene expression of acetylcholine carboxylase. Therefore, in this case, insulin acts as the inducer of acetylcholine carboxylase and it is activating the fatty acid biosynthesis. Whereas, glucagon acts as the repressor of acetylcholine carboxylase gene expression. Therefore, it is inhibiting fatty acid, fatty acid biosynthesis. In cholesterol biosynthesis pathway, HMG coA reductase enzyme is involved. When cholesterol level is high, that means end product concentration is high, it represses gene expression of HMG coA reductase. Therefore, it inhibits cholesterol biosynthesis. This process is called feedback regulation. Let's know about the uh, enzyme regulation by enzyme degradation. Enzymes are not immortal since it will create a series of problems. If not needed, they immediately disappear and when required, they are quickly synthesized. Each enzyme has their individual half-life Few enzymes have short lives in hours or in minutes, while for others have long lives in days. As for example, half-life of LDH4 is 5 to 6 days, while half-life of alpha uh, half-life of amylase is 3 to 5 hours. In general, the key and regulatory enzymes are most rapidly de uh, degraded. Most of the cases in enzyme with long half-life is usually sluggish in its catalytic activity, though not always true. The degradation of enzymes is constantly occurring in the cell. Yet the molecular mechanisms that determine when and which enzymes will be degraded are poorly understood. Absence of substrate coenzymes 
or metal ion activators causes changes in the enzyme conformation increasing its rate of degradation. Intracellular enzyme degradation by proteases is compartmentalized in the cell in the lysosome or in the proteasome. Lysosomes contain various hydrolytic enzymes including nucleases, proteases, glycosidases, lipases, phosphatases, etc. which have their optimum pH at acidic range 4.5 to 5 which is analogous to the activity of the stomach. Lysosomes are known to contain more than 60 different enzymes. As enzymes are proteinaceous in nature, therefore enzymes are degraded inside the lysosome by the action of proteases. Material from outside the cell is taken up by through endocytosis while material from the inside of the cell is digested through autophagy. One of the major functions of lysosomes is the digestion of materials taken up from outside the cell by endocytosis. Enzymes degraded in lysosome, lysosome do not require ebuprotenation. And uh, enzyme degradation by proteases in the lysosome is generally non-specific. Proteasomes are large multi-subunit proteases that degrade ubiquitin tag proteins in an ATP dependent manner. Ubiquitin is a small basic peptide of 76 amino acid found in eukaryotic cells. Proteasomes degrade proteins into short peptides. Let's know how enzyme degradation occurs inside proteasome. First of all, monomeric ubiquitin becomes activated in an ATP dependent manner by enzyme 1. Activated ubiquitin is conjugated by enzyme 2. Thereafter, ubiquitin is transferred to an internal lysine of the target protein by E3 ligases. Following activated and conjugated ubiquitin binds to the abnormal protein forming the ubiquitin protein conjugate. Subsequently, the poly ubiquitin protein conjugate is degraded by the 26 proteasome complex by ATP dependent process. The abnormal protein is clipped into the short peptide fragments and the polyubiquitin chain is released. The polyubiquitin chain is split by deubiquitination enzymes into monomeric ubiquitins. It can be concluded that the amount of an enzyme in a cell can be increased by increasing its rate of synthesis, decreasing the rate of its degradation or by both the processes. Thank you very much for watching this video. In order to motivate me, kindly like, share and subscribe this channel. Don't forget to press the bell icon to get notifications.